This is KGW News at 11. We begin tonight with a live look outside on this clear night. Here's a shot of downtown Portland. Thanks for joining us. I'm Blair Best. Let's turn now to meteorologist Joe Ranieri. And Joe, this warm weather sadly is <laughs> coming to an end. I think a lot of people are a little sad to see it come to an end. But, you know, our producer, uh, Craig Edwards, said it best just a couple of minutes ago. Blair, this is a nice kind of preseason uh, to summer weather with uh, three days uh, here with temperatures 80 or above. We came close to seeing record breaking heat for the second day in a row. We missed it by only two degrees. I'll get to that in a second. But right now, clear skies out there in downtown Portland. Portland temperature of 62 degrees and we are going to be seeing a big cool down heading into tomorrow. We saw temperatures earlier this afternoon in the mid 80s tomorrow. The mid 60s, low to mid 60s, I should say. So expect to see cooler and cloudy conditions tomorrow. And starting off May on Monday, we will be seeing some light showers move through. But yeah, we are going to be done with the sunny and hot conditions, at least for now. As we look at the highs earlier this afternoon, Aurora 80 degrees. McMinnville, you got into the upper 70s. And at the Portland International Airport, 85 degrees. The Dows, you saw a high earlier this afternoon of 90 degrees. Still a very pleasant evening out there with many locations uh, this hour at the temperatures right around the low 60s. So this is the, the next track I'm expecting to see move through by tomorrow morning. You can kind of see that pinwheel out there in the Pacific. That's going to be ushering in more of a marine push, bringing in some thick cloud cover. And with that thick cloud cover will be obviously cooler temperatures, some a slight chance for some light showers along the coast here in the valley, mainly dry. I'll talk more about that and what we can expect to see heading into the first couple days in May, just a few minutes from now. All right, Joe, thanks so much. Well, new at 11, Governor Tina Kotek was in Multnomah County today. While it wasn't the purpose of her visit, she addressed the situation involving Secretary of State Shamia Fagan. Now, Fagan has a side job consulting for a troubled marijuana dispensary. Art Edwards has the latest on what the governor had to say. Today, Governor Tina Kotek talked about Secretary of State Shamia Fagan and her consulting work for a troubled cannabis company during a press conference in Portland. She was in Multnomah County as part of her One Oregon tour. I'm certainly very dismayed by the press reports about um, what's been going on with the Secretary of State and um, her relationship with um, her outside work. Fagan has confirmed her consulting work for the owners of LaModa. As first reported by Willamette Week, Fagan started working for the owners of LaModa in February. Court records indicate the company and associated businesses have racked up millions of dollars in unpaid taxes and have been sued repeatedly for not paying their bills. The owners have made large donations to top Democrats, including Fagan. Governor Kotek talked with Fagan on Friday. I um, let her know that I was concerned by the news reports. Fagan didn't publicly say that she had the side job until April when pushed by a reporter. As Secretary of State, she oversees all state audits. That includes an audit of Oregon's regulations on the cannabis industry. The audit director said on Friday that Fagan recused herself from involvement in the audit after taking the job with LaModa. The governor has asked the Oregon Government Ethics Commission to investigate the situation. She also asked the Oregon Department of Justice to examine the audit. I want to make sure that when we read that audit, we are confident those results are based on good auditing practices and looking at performance. Prior to taking the consulting job, Fagan reached out to a state ethics investigator asking for clarity on conflicts of interest. Oregon law bars public officials from using their positions for personal gain. The governor said it is safest to have a strong firewall between work that's in your office and what you do personally. I don't have outside employment. I only have one job. And so I can't speak to what anybody else does. Art Edwards, KGW News. One man is dead after a shooting in Portland's Northwest District. Officers responded to the scene at Northwest 17th and Irving at around 1130 last night. They found two victims, a man and a woman. Medics say the woman's injuries are not life threatening. However, the man died at the scene. This is the 26th homicide in Portland this year. In developing national news tonight, police are combing the woods, searching for the man accused of murdering five people, including an eight-year-old child. Here's Priscilla Thompson with the latest. Tonight, a massive manhunt in Texas. Is there any danger to the community right now? Well, there's always a danger when you've got a guy that's just shot five people in the head, execution style. 
Authorities searching with dogs, drones, and on horseback for Mexican national 38 year old Francisco Oropesa. He's accused of barging into his neighbor's home late Friday night with an AR-15 rifle and opening fire after he had been asked to stop shooting the gun outside. One of the victims came out of the house, asked him to quit shooting because they were trying to put an infant to sleep. This man takes it upon himself to walk out of his residence with a, uh, a loaded AR-15, walk up into that man's house and start shooting. Five people were killed, all Honduran nationals, authorities say, the youngest just eight years old. The father of that eight-year-old escaped the carnage, but returned to the scene today, heartbroken. My wife and my son are dead, he told our sister network Telemundo. Three other children were also found at the scene, covered in blood, but uninjured, shielded by the bodies of their loved ones, the sheriff told us. This was a uh, bloody, gruesome crime. Investigators say they believe the suspect was intoxicated when he fired his weapon and say this isn't the first time they've been called to the rural neighborhood. Authorities say reports of gunshots ringing out in the night is a normal occurrence here. They're it's always calling the cops for shootings, always, always. Kids can go to sleep and I mean, it's normal. A normal night turned unthinkably tragic. Well, now to an update in Portland. One person is hurt following this fire at an apartment complex in Northeast Portland. This video is from earlier today after the fire, which started around 315 this afternoon on Northeast Knott Street. Portland Fire tweeted that they found heavy fire in the attic and said one firefighter was hurt with a minor burn and was taken to the hospital. No word on their condition or how it all started. Well, switching gears now to downtown Portland, where the Northwest Children's Theater has a new home. It's right across the street from the Schnitz. And as Alma McCarty found out, it's not just a new space, but a new opportunity for performers to showcase their talents. Even on a sunny day, downtown Portland's reputation is often cast in a negative light. But while some may be moving out, others are moving in. This has been many years in the making and we're so excited to be here. Shining a spotlight on the good in downtown, a new children's theater taking center stage. The Judy Kafori Center for Youth Arts Today. Northwest Children's Theater has been a pillar of the community for 30 years. Our old home was in Northwest Portland and we are so excited to be bringing this new space downtown Portland for kids and families of all ages. Known as the Judy, Rachel Brown explains the new location has a lot to offer. In addition to our main stage shows where kids can see some of their favorite children's books come to life, we also have classes and camps where kids can experience theater for themselves. Wanna come to see it again? I heard there's Cinderella coming up. You wanna go see Cinderella? Cecilia Cruz and mom Hannah attended a sold out show alongside dozens of other families. I mean, the previous location was great, but just a little far away. And now you're just kind of downtown in the center of it. And really nice theater and black box and studios, classes. We're going to be back this summer. An open house Saturday helped drum up excitement for what's to come for audiences and performers alike. I started doing things at NWCT when I was seven or around there. Um, I took like my first ever acting class at NWCT and it was so much fun. It was a really good introduction to theater and I love the community here. Maxine Nuesa is taking part in the upcoming show Cinderella. I'm playing one of the evil stepsisters. Um, her name is Patrice. I get to do a bunch of silly things on stage. We have, a whole, we have a whole like duet and everything and it's super fun. She believes the multi-venue arts center will lead to bigger and better things for children interested in all things theater in and around Portland. And it's so cool like being here and also looking at the other signs and shows that are also happening around the area. I think it just shows that like um, people who go to NWCT might even be a part of something bigger one day. Alma McCarty, KGW News.